hypergeometric distribution and probabilities. What a catchy hook for a super engaging topic. I can just see the comments rolling in. Hyper usually means Oh. Well, not in this video it doesn't, because ladies and gentlemen, this one is a doozy. This video is going to explain hypergeometric distributions, show you how to calculate hypergeometric probability, and make a few comparisons to binomial distribution. The main difference between hypergeometric and binomial distribution is in binomial distribution, we had independent trials. With hypergeometric distribution, we have dependent trials. So we're still looking at success or failure situation, and we're still counting the number of successes. The only difference is that we're looking at dependent trials. A situation where we have independent trials, that was flipping a coin, rolling die. We're going to look at some dependent situations. Here's an example. We're forming this committee from a pool of six grade 11 students and seven grade 12 students. We want to determine the the probability that the committee will have two grade 11 students. So when we take a look here, we've got six grade 11 students and seven grade 12 students. We've got a total of 13 students. We're being asked to determine the probability that a committee will have two grade 11 students. We've actually seen problems like this before. If you think back to the choose operation, on the bottom, because we're dealing with probability, we need the total number of outcomes. We should be able to fairly easily identify that quantity. We've got 13 people in total and we're choosing six for a committee. If we have six grade 11 students, we want to choose two grade 11 students. So we have six choose two, but we also have to multiply by the rest of the outcome. Okay. So the rest would be, I've got seven grade 12 students. And if you think, how many do I want to choose? Well, I've already chosen two and I need six people in total. So that should leave me with four. So you remember with probability, it's a good idea to reduce your fraction to a decimal or a percentage, or we can conclude that there's a 30.59% chance that this committee will have two grade 11 students. So just like with the binomial distribution, there is a formula, lots of variables. I personally don't like this formula, but if you are going to be one of those formula users, make sure you understand what these variables represent. So another example here, it's telling us it's a hypergeometric distribution. It's not always going to do that. But if you read the question, a five card hand is dealt from a standard deck of cards. This word dealt, this is your key to understanding that you actually have dependent trials, unlike binomial distribution. Remember, if I deal one card, the probabilities change for the remainder of the deck that I'm dealing. So this is a dependent situation. Therefore, you can conclude that it's a hypergeometric distribution. That's the line of thought you want to be using as you're reading these problems. So our goal here is to show the probability distribution for the number of hearts in a five card hand. So we're gonna have several outcomes here. In a five card hand, the first outcome that I can have is having no hearts, right? I get dealt zero hearts. And we can look at the probability of that happening logically. So if you think about it, we could represent this as a probability with the total outcomes on the bottom. We've got 52 cards. We're going to choose five of them. Remember, order doesn't matter when you're being dealt the hand of cards. Our first portion of our formula, we've got 13 hearts and we're going to choose zero. And remember, if we've chosen zero hearts, that must mean that we need five other cards. There should be 39 of those, right? 52 minus 13, and we need all five. So that's your probability of getting zero hearts. I'm just going to fill in the rest of the table. In a similar way, I'm going to look at getting one up to five hearts. Remember, we're going to look at the total successful outcomes possible. So that should be 13 still, but this time we're going to choose one of them. And that's going to leave 39 cards left. And we want to choose four of them because we've already got one in our hand. We can only have five in total. And you're going to continue that in a similar pattern and you'll come up with this filled in chart. And with probability distributions, remember our end result here is we're going to be calculating the expected value. If you remember, expected value is the sum of all of the outcomes times their probabilities. This column here, this is our outcome times our probability, and this is our probability distribution represented in chart format. The probabilities for zero to five hearts. Part B says calculate the expected value and explain its meaning. We know expected value is the sum of X times PX for all of our outcomes, add them all up. It will take you quite some time. There is a shortcut and it looks like this. Expected value for hypergeometric distribution is EX equals RA over N. So this is very similar to or binomial distribution, which is not good because some people get confused with these formulas. Remember for binomial distribution, our expected value was n times p. Uh, just like that one, this one's very simple, way easier than making all these calculations, adding them up to find your expected value. So in this formula, R is your number of trials, A is your successful outcomes, and N is the size. In this case, the size is the size of our deck. So we have 52 on the bottom. R is the number of trials. For us, it's a five card hand. So we're dealing five cards, it's five trials. And there are 13 successful outcomes possible because there's 13 hearts in the deck. You sub in all these numbers into this formula and on average, there'll be 1.25 hearts in a five card hand. Remember, we don't round for expected value. We leave that as a decimal. If this video helped in any way, feel free to like and subscribe for more mathematical chaos. And as usual, thanks for watching.